Trying to look ready to drop that we take off, we need to make sure that we take into account that factor. And if we don't, we will still continue to look at the case that we are the same case that we have today, where we started out 12 years ago, the fourth or fifth most crime rated city, and now we're the number two. And then he took us to the number one crime rated city in America, and then began to cite statistics as he dropped us from number one to number two. We have a long way to go. These things are serious. 113 people were murdered in the streets of the city of St. Louis last year. 113 people were murdered the, five, the previous year, and we're not doing any better. And I'm tired, I'm, I'm really tired of, of us continuing to come to the table and playing with statistics. These things are real and they're serious, and I'm hoping and praying one day that my opponent takes them as serious as they are. I think Mayor Slade probably wants to respond to that. I'll ask him to do so as we invite Cheryl Poole to come up to the microphone to let a question follow the mayor's cover. Mayor Slade, go ahead. First of all, I uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to respond because it certainly needs some response. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, what's interesting is uh, Mr. Reed, who's complaining about the airport and how bad it is, uh, is a member of the airport commission. And I fought and I fought for those two. And uh, oh, I haven't heard anything about that. But uh, the other thing, let, let me tell you. One at a time, she's on. The other thing is, uh, Mr. Reed has been a member of the Board of Estimate and Portion, as I said earlier, has equal say on city municipal expenditures, on contracts, and on real estate matters. He has the same say that I do on all those things. Throughout his career in politics, he has stood with me on virtually everything and, and have heard little from him on the issues that he now complains. And I'll say that much. The other thing is on uh, the worst managed city government. You look at you should look at the factors that they uh, that they took into consideration. One of which was the high poverty rate in the city, and that is something that we all need to be concerned about. But let me tell you what they didn't consider: the fact that under the toughest economy we've seen in almost all of our lifetimes, we've been able to balance our budget with skyrocketing pension costs. We have also been able to provide a high level of city services. We've been able to work to reduce crime uh, by twice the, the national average over the last six years. And we've been able, through all of this, with your support, we've been able to maintain the highest credit rating the city has seen in decades. So these are things we need to be proud of. We can't be fooled by rhetoric, and we can't be fooled by all this, uh, all this talk, we need to make sure we get down to what's real, we talk about the challenges, and we do something about it. And that's what I've been doing. Thank you. I'd like to bring Cheryl into the conversation here. Go ahead. Mr. 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 Hold on just a second, uh, Mr. Matthews. We'll take this question and then come back to you, Mr. Good morning. My name is Cheryl Prim. What I put on my car was, everyone's talking about black crime. How can we stop black crime if we have not stopped white collar crime? That's corruption. Okay, I am disabled. They swept it on the table like on Medicare. I didn't hurt myself on Medicare. I hurt myself on the job. And that needs to be addressed because I'm not the only one. Thank you very much. Would you like to direct that question to a specific candidate? Well, would that be the candidate that I know that can help me with this? I want to know. You're free to address them every year. Yeah, I want to address that marriage that we have now because for once, my granddaughter slept through the crack of the uh, dead paint before he started that. And that should have, you know, because of her age, she slept, she, she affected with that. And those are two things, but I say I stick with the one. The white collar crime, that's where it starts. It starts at the top. Let's let's go to the mayor. You said you'd like to direct it to him. Let's do that. Yes, I would. Okay. White collar crime is is uh, as bad as any other kind of crime. It's it it corrupts our system. And I think basically uh, I don't know exactly what specific situations you're talking about, but we work closely. Uh, with, the, uh, with the federal authorities, uh, the St. Louis Police Department and others, uh, when there are incidents of white collar crime that are there. I can tell you on crime generally what we've done, uh, we've raised the city's police department's budget by 
44% since I've been in office, while our overall general operating budget's only gone up by 27%. My office budget, uh, on the other hand, has gone down by 13%. Our corrections budget's gone up by 89%. So we have spent uh, a lot of money. We've really made a priority crime overall in the city. Uh, we've made that a priority. We've also pushed the police department uh, to work harder and smarter, and I can talk a lot about what we've done there. We've got some results. And in the future, you know, we need to do more things to create summer jobs programs for kids, address youth violence. There are youth violence uh, task force, or regional task force that I help create uh, through our uh, Commission on Children, Youth, and Families. Uh, we also need to make sure that we um, do more to, for, for, for reentry programs for people coming out of prison. That's something that I advocated for, received funding three years in a row from the state on, but then when the economy went in the tank, uh, the program went away. We're back in Just City this year trying to get some more money in the budget uh, with the help of uh, Senator Jamila Nasheed to help us get some funding for our, and Penny Hubbard, for our, um, um, for our, you know, so that we have the money necessary to address uh, those coming back into society so they can have a, a positive, um, experience to get a job rather than getting back on the streets and, and, and committing crimes again. Be smarter with the police department. We've got a new chief. We also have local control of the police department. I think that's going to help make the department uh, stronger and more effective. And I can keep going, and I know my time. I don't, I don't, I don't stop that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Plenty to chew on there. Uh, Jimmy Matthews, you had indicated you wanted to respond to an earlier comment. Go ahead. Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, I'm very concerned about the crime statistics. And I don't have to look at forks to find out what the statistics are. Simply because in our neighborhood, where I live at in Walden Park, we have a killing a week. And I've had several killings on my, as a matter of fact, in front of our church in the neighborhood. And on, on uh, Riverview and Sherry, there have been two killings in the same spot. Uh, so one of my young students in, at Northwest, one of his friends was killed and dumped in a trash can. So uh, we have plenty of statistics in the 27 ward to let us know that we are not healthy as it relates to crime. And we need to not look at forbs, just look around. And you walk the street at night and you'll find out. And uh, when you're a victim of a crime, uh, you know crime exists. I was walking to my church at 2, two o'clock in the morning. I usually do that. And I'm not afraid. First time I ever got held up. I didn't get robbed because I didn't have any money. I just got stuck up. <laughs> Let's see, uh, do you agree with the uh, proposal by the Chief to reduce the number of police districts in the city from 96? Uh, I think we need a comprehensive study based on uh, the current footprint of the city in terms of you know, where our business districts are today, uh, where you know, the new